Right now, there's a great opportunity to make money as an artificial intelligence consultant. There's a lot of companies that are both fearing and FOMOing about AI. Every day, people are asking me like, what's going on with AI? How do I take advantage of AI? How can AI make me more money? And my answers aren't complicated, but they're industry specific and they're evolving quickly. So I made this video to show you the tools and the mindset to make money as an AI consultant. So if you're interested in being a business consultant that helps companies implement artificial intelligence is to first see if any of their software dependencies can be moved from a code model to a no code model. Like for something with a restaurant change that has an online ordering app or a mid-sized fashion company with an online shopping app, AI is at the place where you can have these modules that can be done visually that really can replace what the software engineers used to do. Similar to how creating like a visually appealing website doesn't require you to know HTML anymore. You're limited a little with some customization choices, but it's really simple and it's a lot better for a smaller company. And AI powered no code software builders, they let companies companies focus what few employees they have on enhancing the brand, increasing sales, the stuff that really matters to growing what they are. And transitioning to no code definitely slashes costs. It's a lot cheaper to hire somebody to manage that sort of a system. But it also expedites updates, accommodates growth, and effortlessly integrates into more advanced features and chatbots, predictive analytics, all the stuff that AI is bringing to the table and is only gonna get better at in the future. It's more future proof. Microsoft has just invested in undisclosed sum, but it, trust me, it's a big number into a company called Builder.ai. And that's awesome because what they specialize in is building software where the person building it doesn't need to know anything about coding. So first off, the cost will be in the thousands and can definitely go up, but it's probably a lot cheaper than keeping an engineer or outsourcing to a lot of engineering companies. But what you're doing in the UI does create code in the back end, and that code you actually own and you could take off this platform and implement. So that's always nice to know. And to show you some examples of what's possible without coding. You can build a social app that rewards its users for posting. You can build a fully functioning marketplace where people have items that they buy and sell. A niche tool for the gig or sharing economy. In this case, a complete ecosystem of mini apps. So there's a lot of potential. No code means they take care of the hosting. And when you need support help, it's about navigating the UI. It's not about actually engineering something. But if the sales department wants a sort of game or an app made up to try to help them get more leads, that might've been something that was never gonna be on the development plan before. But with unlimited revisions in a system like this, somebody from sales can sit down and maybe build that. And of course, they have more enterprise features too that I won't go over in this video. But the point is, this company has been pretty much acquired. It's definitely in a strong partnership with Microsoft who has access to some of the best AI ever. And they already have a virtual assistant that they've been working on. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that gets the big GPT-4 update. It ends up being just as smart as Bing Chat. Maybe it gets integrated into all sorts of other web tools that Microsoft's building. This would definitely be a great place for consultants to step in. Let's talk about the businesses popping up for AI generated content detection for certification companies. Like example clients might be the kind of people who give certifications, but in all different industries. For sure schools and universities that are concerned with like live stream classrooms and chat GPT papers and all that stuff. But also anyone else who's trying to administer online certificates. And there's a lot of them actually when you think about it. Like drone pilots and programming tests and driving renewals and trade skills, plumbers, IT, food service certificates. As a consultant, the challenge is coming in, making sure the system isn't something that's easily frauded, which might require updating the way identification methods work at the beginning of the test. But on the back end, looks like an ever evolving system of different detection software that probably will continually need to be upgraded. We're just simply entering a world where new AI is gonna come on to help people cheat and they might start using it. And then new systems will be built to detect that same kind of cheating. And then those will have to be upgraded too. It's a chicken and egg cycle. So if you wanna be an AI based digital consultant and you wanna help companies find forgeries, deep fakes, and content that was generated by an LLM, you're gonna probably need to install a whole suite of tools on the back end. Now these tools are always evolving, but today we'll just use one of the more basic ones to see if it can detect something that was written with ChatGPT. Generate me a resume for a man named Dylan Curious. He would like a job being a dinosaur paleontologist at the local natural history museum. Wow, look at all those fake publications I'm referencing. Scary. I have skills in fossil excavation and preservation. Cool. He even put my address as 42 Dino Drive. And look at that. My text is likely entirely written by a human. Terrible work. This detector did not catch that, which 
seems obvious. Let's try the less advanced GPT-3. Ooh, wrong a second time. Let's go look at the metrics. So it thinks it's real because it's got a high average perplexity score, a big burstiness score, and the sentence with the word Dylan and Curious was off the charts. So that's gotta be real. That part, I told it. I guess that was the one real part. So here's an example that they use generated by ChatGPT. Now here it says your text is likely to be written by AI. So I guess it detected it. Low perplexity score, low burstiness score. Trusted by NPR, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Daily Beast. Doesn't work at all. I wanna trust it. Probably the best that we have right now. Although there are a lot of companies working on this problem. So it will get better. So if you wanna be an AI consultant for a company and you can find a business that has an outward facing consumer software product, then there might be an opportunity to provide a lot of value to the company by helping them with a new way to think about bug fixes in the code. One of the fascinating things about these large language models like ChatGPT is that they have this latent space that has all of these tokens, basically all these words embedded in this multi-dimensional space, and it makes it really easy for it to translate between two languages like English and French. That it's just as easy to take a programming language like Python or C Sharp or Swift or whatever it is back to English. So when a customer writes an email or opens up help on a chat window and starts complaining about something that doesn't work, they could be talking to a finely tuned large language model like a chat GPT, except this one would understand the code base of the software that they're talking about. So the second they say there's a problem, the artificial intelligence could quickly look through the entire code base and try to figure out what it is that they're trying to talk about. And if it doesn't instantly know, it's also smart enough to say, hey, I have a few follow-up questions. Was it when you clicked here? Was it when you did this? And it's honing in on exactly the block of code or the function or the variable issue that's actually the bug. Game changing. Like there's nothing comparable to this that's existed before. But imagine the customer experience, talking about something, filling in the problem, and then having the actual code potentially even written by the artificial intelligence handed off to the engineer for approval. That could take seconds. That could actually be done by the time the entire conversation with the customer is over. From there, a human engineer might see the code, either make some tweaks or just approve it, and all of a sudden the entire system has been essentially patched, the bug has been squished, all just like that. So for example, a long email of somebody complaining about something that might not have the interest in being ultimately efficient for an engineer can be quickly summarized up and written in a style that is meant for an engineer. So you get a much tighter description. That's large language model, summarization, but with a specific mindset of who the reader is. Second, it can take all of that new text, also all of the text that it knows from the different issues that are already in the queue, and read the entire code stack and think about where the priorities should be. And this is an interesting data source to keep tuning a model because if it puts it in the wrong priority level, by simply adjusting it, moving it up or down, it can actually learn about what it did right and what it did wrong. And it will find patterns that no human could in the data set and in the way the email was written and even what other decisions in the past have made those ratings change. It's like a human brain. It will just get smarter at making those priorities. And third, it can do something else that humans really can't, and that's make much better predictions about how code will work in the first place. Now, AI-powered tools like Copilot already do a whole bunch of unit testing. They break the code into pieces and they test variables to see where it breaks. They test bigger chunks. They kind of hierarchically put them all into a big container and they try the whole thing to see where it breaks. That's really powerful. But all that knowledge is usually left with the engineers. That knowledge can actually also be translated into text and summarized. It happens all the time. A small tweak to fix one little error that a customer is complaining about has knock-on effects or they push something to the side and months later some other developer has to figure out what's going on and fix that it's that's what makes it so messy and engineering so hard AI is great at that too one thing that consultants are often hired to do is research the customer and this is usually pretty hard legwork you just have to like get a whole bunch of customers on the phone some that are happy some that are unhappy some that are potential clients some that are former clients and do interviews and use your brain intuitively to try to figure out what went wrong, what their needs are, and all of that stuff. And a good consultant will have been doing this for years and will have just that knack for picking up what it is that the customers really need, the patterns and what they're hearing, summarizing that into maybe a tool and giving it to the CEO as a suggestion. And that can be one of the hardest parts about a consulting job, thinking like a detective. But as the many artificial intelligence breakthroughs we've had recently show, machines are getting really good at finding the kind of patterns that just humans aren't capable of. And I think this is another place where it's time for AI to start being applied in a way that will give superhuman powers to consultants. I mean, I'm not even saying I love the future we're stepping into, but the truth is these machines are just gonna have us figured out. 
I mean, look, computer vision is going to read our facial cues. It's going to know the emotions that we're trying to hide. What we say is transcribed and put into large language models and summarized and looked through and patterns are found. And all of that is gonna be correlated with a company's revenue and needs and goals. And there's gonna be new patterns that the machine can find that companies can act on that just haven't been there before. But from an AI consulting point of view, using machine learning, computer vision, to understand a customer's needs when they're on a video conference actually has has some pretty profound outcomes. So this is called the voice of the customer tool and it intrigues me. So its benefit is that you just use a normal system like Zoom or Google Meet and you just have a conversation with your customer. You don't focus on anything else during the call. But with this tool, the video then gets analyzed by artificial intelligence, which can help you capture the attitudes, experiences, and emotions of that customer. So the customer might talk about their biggest pain point, a feature request, and it can note that part in the conversation so you can quickly jump to it. So by analyzing the transcript and also being part of a collective cloud system that's learning from all these other video conference calls that it's analyzing, I can imagine how as a consultant bringing this kind of tool to a company might help them in these departments. You know, user research, making sure your user interface is really convenient, hearing what people have to say about it, hiring and recruiting your products teams, and of course, sales and customer service. If you're a consultant for a business and you're trying to infuse some artificial intelligence into the business model, anywhere that there's customer service, you might really want to think about applying a large language model like ChatGPT. They have some advantages and they're on a path that's going to be so refined in the next six months or one year. You really should help a company get on that path now. Generative search is actually going to replace the number one website in the world. And soon enough, it's going to be on Amazon. And once people experience that kind of shopping relationship, it's going to make websites or apps where people have the traditional put things in a cart and search experience just really bad. So don't just go in and look at the current system and say, how can I make an incremental improvement? Think to yourself, hey, how can we go to the app or the user interface and try to start with a button in the corner that just brings up a chat interface. And over time, we'll think about how to expand that into probably the primary way people want to interact with the brand. So no affiliation, there's a lot of companies like this, but I wanted to find one example of a company that's offering a plug and play service to add large language model capabilities into more of a shopping, a commerce, a brand experience for a customer. They found these guys, hello rep AI. So first they highlight how a large language model like ChatGPT style interface can be such a better experience for a customer. So if you're a consultant looking to shoot some AI power into a company, replacing a customer service rep with a tool like this, or at least augmenting it for now would be maybe something to think about. One nice thing is you can have a more predictable business model. It can usually be scaled up very quickly if you get a big rush of customers. Obviously digital can go 24 seven. So here's an example where there's a company, they're trying to convince these health conscious customers through advertisements on Facebook to buy their product. And a health minded customer like that might have a lot of questions about was it ethically sourced? What kind of material is in this? What am I putting in my body? It might be very detailed and complicated stuff that a computer could actually read through understand, be fine tuned on, learn from the experience of talking with other like-minded people and always tune its answers. Plus large language models just are so good at quickly finding information that people forget. The future is personal shopping concierge. If you can outsource that to maybe a company like this or any other company that does something similar, that could be a big win for the company and you as a consultant will make them more money than they're spending on your time. Okay, so we can check out the case studies. It seems like, oh my God, is that what I think it is? <laughs> So there's one tool that a lot of consultants that want to apply artificial intelligence to a small business are hoping lives up to the hype. And that's Atori.ai. So they're connecting basically a no code plumbing system where you can take little blocks of code. Some of them can be powered by artificial intelligence with prompts. Some can just be old school APIs. Some can just be ways to interact with documents and other traditional files. But at the end of the day, you get an awesome workflow builder like this, something that you could actually give to a company as a consultant and they could understand the change potentially even teaching them how to use the tool so that they can in the future keep updating it. Or as a consultant, you can come in here and very quickly understand what changes need to be built and what you made in the past. Now, of course, you can always recommend things like ChatGPT with plugins or maybe even AutoGPT, but they've mostly been more like assistance for the employees that a company already has. This tool is actually looking to be the pipeline, to be the workflow, to go right into a company's systems and actually see what the documents are to augment them with artificial intelligence. Now, I've never played with this tool. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I would imagine privacy would be a huge problem. So I don't know how they're gonna handle that, but in theory, the chain of workflow seems super useful. Smash that subscribe button.